each other in, 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 in eye. So you, you get the feedback of, of the people. That's for decision makers very important in design centers of automotives, for example. And um, so does the, does the uh, angle of vision affect what you see? Like if somebody is looking at it from the side and somebody is right in front. Um, does it give a different perspective to different people according to that or, or do all of them get the same, are able to see the, the, the image in as yeah. real a, a way as possible? We have, we have an extremely wide view, uh, viewport. So uh, sometimes in, in exhibitions, for example, we have a group of 10 people around the display. Right, uh, and I would say we have a viewing angle about 150 degree to the screen. Is, is right, the screen. and it doesn't matter how far you are away. So um, even you have a great stereo feedback, if you stay maybe four meters away of the display, you you normally will not do this. Normally you stay in a in a distance of maybe one meter, 80 centimeter, but but if you go further away you have still the same great experience. So uh, from the video, I, I couldn't fully grasp as to what all was part of your uh, package hardware. Was the workstation part of the hardware or was the extra screen and the glasses the, uh, the hardware? Meaning, can you, can you adapt this to any other workstation? Like you said, it works with Windows or Mac. Yes, so can yes. you clip this on to another computer uh, where your workstation is? Uh, so at, at first, um, the typically use case is that you have, for example, an, a laptop or a workstation with, with two digital outputs. Right. And um, depending on the application, it makes sense that you have a, a workstation graphic card, like an NVIDIA Quadro card or an AMD right. Radeon Pro card. Right. Those cards offers uh, it called QuadBuff, an OpenGL extension, which uh, is able to uh, to transport a stereoscopic signal. Right. And um, the second question was: uh, so this this works with with any any Quadro card, any Radeon Pro card, uh, any Windows operating system like Windows 10, like Windows 7, like Windows XP, for example. So the technology is already since 15 years in the market, so we have all operating systems. The, last, the past 15 years are supported our technology. So that's, that's even a big advantage that we have really hundreds of applications uh, are running plug and play. I think, yeah, we should maybe, uh, I think once uh, the panel discussion is over, should probably get a chance, I think, whether with Joseph or with Hari, if he's there to see what are the other applications. And uh, uh, Joseph, one other very uh, simple question. What is the maximum dimension of how big can can the, can the immersion go, can the visualization yeah. go? Yeah, so this is uh, the, the idea on, on the plural view is that it is a really a desktop monitor. So we have a 22 inch, a 24 inch, a 27 inch, and a 28 inch. Okay. And with different resolutions. So it starts with 2.1 megapixels, it goes up to 3.7 or 8.3 megapixels. So we have some, uh, three different resolutions. Uh, four different uh, dimensions, and if you want to have bigger screens for meeting rooms, uh, we offer as well screens. Um, uh, we have a, a 45 inch and a 86 inch display. Those displays are in a different technology. They are like you know from television, 3D television. So it's a line by line polarized display. This means you lost 50% in the horizontal resolution. But uh, if you look on those uh, 4K displays in a distance of maybe three, four meters, uh, you will not recognize this resolution loss. So that's great. 
uh, for for presentation as well. The hardware requirements are more or less the same. So it means you also need a Quattro card or a Radeon Pro card. You also need the quad buffer support. So any application which supports the PluraView will also support our bigger scaled uh, screens. And even if the 86 inch will not be enough in, in size, we are manufacturer of a laser projector system. Uh, we can build uh, VR walls up to 8 meter, 10 meter with 8K resolution, with 12K resolution PRI, as also stereoscopic solutions. So uh, the power walls are uh, self standing constructions with wheels. So uh, there are still very uh, huge, uh, huge. Uh, projections as, uh, sizes, but they need only about 70 centimeter stand uh, space in the depth. So that's very interested that uh, we can go in very small rooms. We can build very large stereoscopic walls with multiple inputs. So you can bring picture in picture or maybe four sources and uh, we can arrange those sources like we want. We can scale it. It's a pixel processing behind. This is used in high end meeting rooms. Uh, customers from us are uh, aircraft manufacturers, automotive manufacturers, um, chemical industries. They use this. Uh, it starts at 100,000 euros, so it's not so cheap, but it has uh, a lot of options. Uh, and, and we built those, those walls already since 2010. So also this technology has experiences with 10 years um, users' experiences. Yeah. Oh, no, I think that's pretty impressive. Maybe I think we should, if, let's see if within the next, today or tomorrow, we get a chance to see yeah. what it is. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so the, the best uh, use case uh, in in the medical sphere is uh, what I see is for team discussions and Correct. especially in specialties like mine, John, like in cardiology, yeah. where yeah. you know visualization is uh, is almost as good as the tactile. Correct, uh, exactly. exactly. Like in your specialties, it's more important to you know the physical uh, aspects are more important in cardiology. Excellent visualization. And the limitation is, you know, uh, that you know it's sometimes difficult for the entire team to view the same three-dimensional exactly. image. So that's where this can be very useful yeah, that the whole it, team can see. Yeah. It, it is going to be very useful in, in a lot of soft issues. Uh, all yes. Those, uh, yes. Uh, my, that's the way I I look at this. Uh, I think a lot of customization can be done. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so what's the software interface here? What is the software interface? The here? software is, is very flexible. So um, in, in, in the video you saw, uh, I guess, uh, about 20 different applications, but maybe uh, there are more in the market. So we made uh, investigations in, in software applications since uh, February this year. So uh, I believe there are more applications available. We helped already in our 15 years market uh, time, a lot of software vendors to implement the stereoscopic viewing in their application. So we, uh, we have a worldwide a distribution network. We have also, I think that would be the, one of the next step we, we should go here in India. We have already, I think, four or five demo systems of the PluraView in India already available. So it makes sense that we give one of uh, those displays in your hands that you get your own experiences and you have your own applications and we can get in the discussion if the application man, uh, uh, comes maybe from US or from uh, from Japan or whatever, then we, we can get in touch with the software vendors. We can explain the software vendors how easy it is to implement a, a stereoscopic interface in their existing application. And here it is important that our uh, PluraView displays are not 
need a preparatory interface. So it's good for, for any software vendor is if a, right. uh, if a plural view display works, all other stereoscopic devices on the market are also work. So like a projector, like a, a, a 3D TV, like an auto stereoscopic display, for example, or like, uh, uh, yeah, not sure which which kind of other devices on on stereo hardware. So it's important, uh, the software vendor only have to bring a, a all 3D application have one viewport. One viewport means one camera, which looks at the scene on your your 3D printing scene on your point clouds or whatever the content is uh, under this. And the stereoscopic application has to set a second cam like our two eyes, and two eyes have to look in an eye distance of six and a half centimeter on the scene. And the content, the second cam capture, this has to be rooted in the OpenGL quad buffer interface. That's in principle the only thing uh, what software vendors have to implement. And quad buffering is an, is an, uh, comes from the Unix world already. So it's older than, uh, than Microsoft operating systems. And that's where we have an OpenGL 1.2 extension. A very old uh, extension is necessary. And it is already implemented in DirectX and it is already implemented in Vulkan. So even the, the latest, uh, APIs, graphic APIs support quad buffer as well the oldest one supports them. So, uh, and the translation to the final hardware is not in the software. The software vendor don't have to care about the hardware. The graphic card vendors has to care about this. So NVIDIA, AMD, and in the future as well, Intel. Intel will come also very soon with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, standalone graphic interfaces. And so that's a good thing that a lot of hardware vendors will care for the last uh, last part of the visualization, for the monitoring on projectors on direct LED walls. That was the missing thing. So also direct LED walls support up buffer stereo, for example. So that's, uh, that's all covered if, if the pure view will work. So what was the, the, the globes that I saw on the video? What do those globes do? Um, that, that's more or less an example. So we, uh, I think the best integration would be if we use uh, globes, globes with markers. So then you don't need the bolts. The bolts are a tool you can uh, 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 it's, it's more like the handles. I saw that in the other video, yeah. in the expanded yeah. version. And it falls with the way. Instead of the bolt. Yeah. 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 We have the orientation with the glass. Ah, I and see. So with the glass, like a navigation, right. you orient yourself. And right. the bolts also have the markers. Right. When you move, no, you're able to move control, like controls okay. you have. It. Got it. So it was nice. I mean, actually, I saw the full version of the 3D uh, Plura view. It was very impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. you, ha you handled it, John? No, no, no. The video that you saw? No, 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 no. It was a video. It was purely a video that I saw. Okay. Uh, immersion is something which we want to look at, but I, I, the only thing is like, uh, like, like exactly like what you said. I do not know how much of it is going to go into maxillofacial surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's reason. Even if it's a tumor, no. How how far are we going to go inside? In cardiology, yes. Or if you're going to look at a liver. Or no, that's a that's a area of critical area okay, where okay. you want to look at the blood vessels. You want to look at your okay, okay. Yes. yes, you have to see that uh, maxillofacial. Anyway, you're opening it up, you're seeing everything. So, mm. uh, but there must be something. Probably, if we get to use it, we may uh, we may probe into it more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joseph, for your time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. It was nice, nice talking. It's, it's fascinating, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and 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 definitely we should use this conference so that we come to the next step. And the next step should definitely that we give you our hardware in your hand because yeah. you are expert, and 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 your expertise would be interested for us as well.
Yeah, because we can find more and more use cases and more and more applications. Yeah. So and we uh, have uh, already an, an, uh, a good relation to a Netherlands software vendor. Beasalis is their application name. And they have a very cost efficient visualization software for all kind of uh, uh, ultrasound, uh, CT, MRT data sets. Yes. And, and uh, if we give you this bundle at first, uh, the hardware plus uh, the software, then you have already an, an, a very fast experience platform. Uh, for for the medical data visualization, and if you are more interested in the in the printing things, uh, for example, Basso systems with Katia Siemens NX uh, or uh, also PTC Creo, for example, or SolidWorks, uh, also softwares are running with our Pluralview as well. And uh, I think also an uh, older version of Rhino. Not sure if you know the application, cut application Rhino from McNeil. This is also one of the uh, cut application which support stereo viewing. Okay, so, uh, gentlemen, uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Atul Goyal, who, uh, who is also joined us. Uh, so, Dr. Atul Goyal. Sir is actually he's a, neurolo a neurologist and neurosurgeon from KIM Hospital and also the professor head department of neurosurgery King uh, King Edward Memorial Hospital Mumbai. So thank you, sir. In fact, uh, today's morning presentation was really really very interesting, and we could actually gain uh, to uh, gain that knowledge in terms of the intricacies that you know CD printing can serve and also imaging. So Jeff comes from the the CD imaging. Uh, Space and visualization. So uh, we're just discussing on those aspects. We're just waiting yeah. for gentlemen to join. But we will start our uh, panel discussion. Uh, and uh, Dr. Mahesh, uh, uh, Dr. Goel just wanted to introduce him. He's the introduce. Uh, him. He's the he's a doctor. He's a pedia, pediatric cardiologist from Amrita Medical okay. Institute. Yeah. And uh, Dr. John Nason, who is a orthopedic surgeon. Uh, uh, who has done some great work in 3D printing for many years that he's been serving. Uh, and Jeff is actually a technology respondent uh, who is offering 3D imaging uh, AR solution, AR solution yes. So, uh, so now I think it's, it's a, it, it starts this discussion. Uh, uh, the, the theme of this particular panel discussion is uh, 3D printing. And now let me also add uh, 3D imaging, uh, future in health science. Uh, so let me ask, uh, the first question uh, to the senior most sir, you, uh, uh, how will this uh, technology, both of these, uh, in, including 3D printing and uh, 3D imaging uh, visualization, be of benefit for the for the neurologist going forward in terms of how, how do you see this as a technology benefiting you and the, the, the application and the sector as in uh, specialization? See, there is no, no question that this technology has emerged and emerging still maybe it will become much better in the coming future and what is more important is you know 3d technology 3d models in particular 3d imaging has been in existence for some time what i feel is 3d models is the new thing and there are several situations in neurosurgery where 3d models can just be game changers they can just be so important that without the 3D technology, it may be, may be a little bit difficult to perform some of these complex operations. Like for instance, if we are dealing with craniovertebral junction and the, the neck is twisted and turned and there are complex anomalies. And if you, do, if you have to do stabilization, which we do, and which is our field of expertise, my feeling is if we do not have these models in some situations, we can be in very big difficulty to perform these operations. Similarly, there are many other situations like arteriovenous malformations, complex brain tumors. What I would like to you to develop and you to think about is to when you develop models, you know, I will like to have arterial blood red, 
venous blood blue, tumors yellow, means this kind of color configuration like brain tumors, some of these complex brain tumors are intricately related to arteries and veins and all these things. But if you can give me red of artery, blue of vein, yellow of tumor, and then the bone configuration, and then the brain configuration, I think this is not yet 100%. This is the field that we will like to you to think about and think as to how to go further. The other thing is we have a very common tumor in the brain, which is acoustic neurinoma, acoustic tumor, brain tumor. And if you can give me a model where you can show me the relationship of the cranial nerves in different color, if you can do that, it will just, you know, it is maybe it is very difficult or maybe it is still evolving or maybe you're thinking about it. But if you can give me such an information before operation, it will be an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. And I will suggest that our technical experts are here and you must be already thinking in those lines and which is the next generation of, uh, you know, 3D models that I'm looking for. Of course, uh, will, there are, yeah, please, Jeff, please. Uh, we will have uh, one of the software experience experts, uh, I think tomorrow, um, Arjen Brinkmann from the company Vesalius. He would be attend uh, tomorrow on, on our booth. And, and I believe that the software is already able because I only play with sample files, but those sample files have a lot of separate colored uh, elements. And, and this software is already, I think, also more than 10 years in, in this high-end visualization quality available. So I guess that he has already those questions uh, get, and maybe it is already available. I, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that we are very close to uh, to that what you are expecting in software. The, you know, if you are really asking me as a neurosurgeon as to what I want from you, you know, there are the, apart from this color coding of green, uh, this yellow, uh, this blue and red, that is one thing I want. And I'm not sure if it is existing or not. Second thing is I want the brain tumor to be shown to be have a model where the adjoining relationship is shown in a form of very clear delineation. Another thing that you can think about, and that is very important for me as a neurosurgeon, is about interaxial brain tumors. Brain tumors interaxial, like gliomas. And if you can show me the tumor and the adjoining fiber tracts, which I showed one image today of fiber tracts. And if you can give me a model showing the fiber tracts and the brain tumor in the same frame, I think that will be another game changer in your field of 3D models. Mm -hmm. And you can think about it. Yeah, good input. Yes, we, uh, we will go in discussion. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, Hi, uh, sir. Good evening, sir. This is John. I mean, I'll I'll just start off. Uh, I think it can be done. It's not very difficult. The only thing is, uh, what you see is what you get. The way I look at it is in in three D printing uh, is if I can if I can visualize it in my software, if I can I'm able to segment it on the software is able to pick it pick up the the axial sections uh, axial uh, tumor on, separate it from the hard and the soft tissue. Then yeah, because we have done it with. I have done it for intracranial aneurysms. We have done with an MRI, a combination of an MRI and a CT scan. We have been able to take an intracranial aneurysm separately and do it. And uh, we've done that. We have digitalized it, send the file to, to, to Dubai and the Middle East, and they have been able to print it and do it. It's doable. It's not difficult. Two questions, Urvaka. One is the time taken. And number two is what is the, rem what is the cost involved for the what's the payback that we're going to get from a commercial standpoint then it makes sense as people spending time for it and do it for us one one thing i will tell you to get information even in my public hospital i do not mind the cost if i can get some additional information as i have shown today morning yes. that we were the first one in the world to introduce 3d models in arteriovenous malformation surgery yeah. In craniovertebral junction surgery, yes. 
in skull based reconstruction surgery despite the fact that our patients are poor and they cannot afford but when it comes to investigations i will never you know back out just because the investigation is expensive that is not the principle on which i work so the, mm -hmm. uh, the best thing is you, if the model can be made which helps me i will yes. use it in, in you know irrespective of the cost factor no matter how the patient is poor or not poor or whatever and 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 this help could be in a first stage that's happened in the automotive for a long time so if you made a first in the first stage you uh, you start with the visualization in in real time because that's a benefit if you have this holograph view on our plural view for example you see it in real time you have no printing time no uh, data preparation time or whatever so if you have the software which is able to support in the same viewport two different sources like for example this fiber things or uh, or the homography MRT data, then you you play with those data, you rotate it, you zoom it, you uh, you made um, a selection uh, that you see inside. All this uh, cross uh, selection things are possible, and 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 in your brain you understand what's happened, and then you start the printing because you see okay it will help and benefit and then you have maybe three days later your physically model and and then you you can work then on this physical model but uh, it, i think it is also often important that you get a fast feedback yeah yes so um uh, dr atul hi i am dr mahesh i'm a cardiologist so uh, I have my problem statements are very similar because we look at extremely tiny arteries, veins, soft tissue structures when we model for the heart. So uh, this challenge that you said that you know about being able to identify the course of a nerve, its relationship to its surrounding structures, differentiating a fiber or the margins of a tumor. So that first of all is dependent number one on the quality of the baseline imaging, whether you're imaging uh, itself was targeted at really acquiring that level of information. Second is uh, the, the the segmentation process where, like John said, somebody who knows what he's looking for, he knows that he's looking for the course of this nerve and knows how to trace it through this actual stack of images, can really uh, just through the process manage to do this very effectively. It can very well be done as long as the image has been acquired and number two, the segmenter knows what he's looking for and how to segment it out. So that should very much be possible. And like Joseph said, if we are doing this segmentation in 3D already, I think, John, that really would help the segmenter segment it so much more quickly and with yeah, so much sure. better spatial orientation. Because sometimes we are, you know, drawing in structures on actual mm -hmm. stack through 300 slices, 400 slices sometimes because the auto segmentation of the softwares may not pick up the structures that you are actually interested yeah, in. Yeah, it doesn't so then, up, yeah. yeah, so then you have to actually go in and manually draw it in or subtract it out of the areas that have been auto segmented by the software. So, so in cardiology also, that is sometimes I spend hours doing that for a tiny baby with tiny vascular structures. I have to go in manually through a stack of 400 images and you know painstakingly uh, encircle that structure till that till the whole thing is seen. So now with uh, a segmenting software which works in 3D, that does make these processes uh, more efficient and uh, simpler. Yeah. All right, so I think I think we should, uh, I think this is this is nice, this is, so we can do, I mean, if uh, the, the first, uh, the answer to Dr. Atul says, yes, it, it, we can give it a shot, we can give it a try. Uh, number two is I think with a little bit of help from, from Snyder, you yes. should be able that will make our work easier because that the, yes. the major chunk made the major part of the segmentation is taken care of and i only have the other output so then it's easy for me to print that out and then join it along with the post structure okay. no no one one thing i can tell you as far as i am concerned you see i if any help is required from my side like you want imaging you want what i want what exactly information i want and we can discuss on each case 
and then I can tell you that I want this artery to be shown, in this tumor to be shown. These are the fibers of the brain that can be shown separately from the tumor. I think this kind of a, uh, if I give you the information as to what I want, yes. only then you will be able to provide yes. me that information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That, that's a must, sir. You, yeah. it's, it all starts from the, the source. So yes. it's, from whatever you get, yeah. These are not plug and play that, you know, you just send it out and it just comes back. You yeah. have to very specifically uh, ask for what do you need to see out of that entire data set. That's right. That's right. We have a strong workstation prepared for remote access. So we have a full or we have no limitation on, on this machine. So this is a private network. On this machine, we have connected the PluraView system, and uh, we can install on this machine all kind of software you want to run. Uh, we have a, a close relationship to, to multiple software vendors. So we can start, for example, with this Versalio software. We have a great relation to Siemens. We can install a Siemens application, and then we can have on, on this machine uh, a Zoom or a Teams meeting, and and then uh, the software vendors get immediately a, a feedback. Uh, is it going in the right direction? And if if we find uh, maybe already one or two things, it could be interested. Then I would say we could we start immediately with a with a trial of our hardware and even with a trial of the software. And then we have to define only what is the place we have, we have to ship this, this equipment. Yeah, uh, I'm I actually I'm just looking at the Vesalis software 3D. Uh, I'm just went to the site. I think uh, you should try that, Mahesh. You should just look into the yeah. site. Vesalis. Yes. The, uh, the, the quality yes. of the imaging is, is really good. So yeah. Probably, I think Shivu, you should Shivu just see for uh, as part of 3D graphy. If, we can get a chance to uh, to look at this uh, as a trial for for, the, for its members, for the professionals, and then once it is yes. on, then we can see what is the best uh, deal that we can take on. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Shivu, it's on to you. But I think it, we should give it a try because I think it covers a lot of things. I mean, I'm just seeing it, seeing the site, uh, and it's it, I think it's 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 good, it's definitely. Mm -hmm. Because imaging and data is the key, because that's going to be the main course. Decision. Okay, now uh, uh, what we will do is uh, since we are late in the night, I don't know, Jeff, you're, you're, I think you're almost afternoon, but we, we, we've actually tired, maybe going for sleep. <laughs> <Everybody's>... <laughs> okay, uh, we, we have 6 p.m., so it's for me it's not a problem, yes, <laughs> but you are very tired, okay, <laughs> four hours. You know, you know, doctors awake for a long time uh, because they've been really working hard. So uh, and uh, I, I appreciate their coming and joining the session. So uh, so I will quickly want to uh, uh, you know go through the the response that has come in our panel of audiences. So I think uh, now we can post questions and we will quickly do a, a five minute uh, round of uh, uh, you know Q&A and then we will close in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so the first question that I get from uh, uh, yeah Dr. Tirudhi, Tiru the members. Uh, is this, there any chance 3D printed model can be taken over by realistic AR in the future? Okay, so the, here we say that is, it, is there a competition between 3D printing and AR <laughs> going forward? Yeah, please, I would open this discussion to everybody for people to respond. See, uh, augmented reality AR is also an emerging concept in, in neurosurgery. And this concept is, you know, some people are doing but it is not a very commonly used uh, modality of uh, you know use but if the if the if the making of the augmented reality models and things like that becomes more easier and more frequent i think they can also be very useful in neurosurgery so in a way it will uh do you think it is going to be facilitating or complementing each other, or is it going to be competing? I mean, that's the question I believe that uh, Dr. Tirudhi is asked. But I think it's complementing each other. What, yeah, what yeah. Do you think? I, I would say it starts always with VR, and the AR things comes then in 
in the last stage, okay? So you have to make first a VR because you don't have anything physically in front of you. So you create the VR stuff virtually, made the concept, and the AR comes in a typically in as a support. AR is a support tool. It is an, 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 an three-dimensional user manual. It is a real-time user manual, more or less. It, is, it, it can help you to mask objects that you know exactly where you have to make your cuts, for example. All these things comes after the visualization uh, in VR. Uh, I do think that uh, these technologies are one complementary and uh, two, they share the basic process. So uh, the, the process of the imaging, the process of the segmentation, this process of creating the uh, the virtual 3D uh, model, all those are common to, or would be common to most of these technologies. Mm -hmm. And then whether you're physically printing it out or visualizing it uh, in the 3D space, that's where the difference is. And that again depends upon your problem statement. Like in uh, many of uh, John's cases, you actually need the tactile feel. You need to hold it. You need to, uh, you know, uh, bend something over it. In those cases, of course, you cannot. Uh, you do need physical models. But in many of the neurosurgical cases or in radiology, etc., it may be enough to visualize. So again, it depends upon what we need as clinicians, and the technology needs to give us what it can. Of course, having a visualization. Uh, will uh, cut down the number of models that we actually physically print out, uh, especially in, say, in specialties like cardiology. But again, it depends upon the, the 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 needs of the particular case. John, you were saying something. Yeah. See, uh, 2005 when we started, right? When I mean, when I when I was introduced into 3D technology, that time the, we were only looking at CT scans. We were not. We didn't even have 3D reconstruction at that time. Yeah. You're looking at a scan. So. When we started the software, it was, no, wow, there was a lot of wow factor. But then yeah. the question came into, is it practical? Then at that time, we were doing 3D models in 2005 itself. The fear was, would models replace the CT scan printouts? Scan, or, or was it just the scanning, the, the doctor sees it, and then he just directly goes on to model. But then today, we are in a time, what today we are in 2020, both complement each other very well. So I feel AR, the AR and 3D printing will only complement it and make it more uh, to the common man because uh, augmented reality, I feel has, yes, is great, but it will be restricted more to a, to hardware limitations, to a certain uh, things. But that benefit, 3D printing will be able to give it out to the yes. common person or not. That's, that's my take on it. Uh, so it's a complementary solution. There is going to be enough room for both. Thank you. Thank you, jo Dr. John. And uh, so I think uh, uh, any more questions? So we can uh, uh, maybe quickly take it and then, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, just to remind all of the gentlemen that tomorrow from 3.30 to 4, we have one session on medical 3D imaging communication, uh, very specific uh, to decision making using Versalus that uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. John also did mention uh, now. I think that's the session that is going to be held tomorrow. I think it'd be interesting for all of us to gain as knowledge on that subject. Uh, okay, what are the softwares used currently? Uh, is what is asked by Sri Hari. Softwares for what? What this is this for I Joseph? Think. I think uh, the yeah, question Joseph, was about yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, 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 the, the question would be to to your audience. So uh, we we don't know what is uh, what application did you use oh, okay. now. So which which application did you use for printing or for preparation your construction, for example? Okay. Uh, okay. From my my side, I'll tell you. We, I mean, for us, for for conversion, uh, for see, for us, for visualization is either going to be. 3D slicer that we're going to use, or whenever we could afford it, it's going to be materialized mix software. I mean, that's that's the best today in the market. But then when it comes to virtual simulation for us and virtual planning, I use a haptic device because that's something which we have. That's mm -hmm. from Geomagic uh, Freeform. Yeah, free form. Haptic, yeah, yeah, I know so Freeform very well. Mm -hmm. so with okay. the haptic, you know, the, the software is one, but with the haptic, it gives you an actual feedback of the bone. No? So then you can cut know, it I and know, then know, know. That, uh, that gives a feedback. So, so we have a lot, I mean, the local surgeons, we encourage them to come to the lab so they, they can sit, they can feel the bone, they can do the cuts. 
mm-hmm. and when and also with the, where the canals are, no, you can dip on the canals there, so they know how what's the kind of the bone that you have. The haptic gives you that wow. feedback. So, hey, Mahesh, that the, the that's haptic, that's something that uh, we should have. Haptic and the stereo uh, fits together, so haptic and stereo fits perfectly together. Yeah, we that integration. So, so I said, like I said, there's a lot of so tools are there independently. I think it's 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 teams like us which bring it all together. Mm-hmm. Because the major chunk of uh, I think this is a this is a surgical team which has a lot of technology inbuilt in them. No? So I think we would be the right persons on to to lead this front and uh, oh, yes. take it forward. So, so also yeah. now that we have Dr. Atul Goel sir also joining the you know the 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 team. Uh, yes, sir. So I think you, your response and your inputs will also be of help. So we we build a team around. Happy going forward in terms of what is the end requirement. Yeah. Good sir. Thank you so much for your gentlemen for your time. Uh, thanks Jeff and thanks Dr. Mahesh. Thank you Dr. John. Thank you Do- Dr. Atul. Uh, sir and thank you so much for this wonderful. Uh, uh, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Have a wonderful. Uh, night. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.